So what do you do when you come across an interesting project on the internet or on YouTube? Well, here on Ryan Make, I make it. Hence the name, Ryan Make. And so one of the projects that's been really interesting to me has been fluidized sand. You might have seen it on Mark Rober's channel or The King of Random. And so I thought, why don't we make their small demonstration tub? And so I did. So instead of using the same plastic tubes and container that I've seen before, I thought, how can we make this more versatile, more capable to be able to do more things. So I replaced the plastic tubing with copper so that way it could withstand more heat, as well as replace the plastic, which would melt, decided against galvanized, which would give me metal fume fever and went with an enameled roasting pan because they were cheap and easily accessible. So that way we could turn this fluidized sand bed into another project entirely, which is a propane fire feature that I could put in my backyard and enjoy with friends and family. So the guide to build this whole project is in the Instructables link below at my Instructables page. But a quick description. So we took this enameled roasting pan, drilled some holes to allow our copper pipe configuration, which is six cross pieces with about 168 holes drilled into them, which are then fed via this ball valve and this compressed air source. Now, I was originally intending on having this test out as a liquid sand bed, but I was unable to find uh, a compressed air or a nitrogen source that had the volume and flow rate needed to do that test. So we moved on to the fire feature. Okay, so we have our system set up as an outdoor fireplace feature where we have our copper tubing, our roasting pan, our tube to our propane and regulator, and it's filled with super cheap playground sand. Now, I have it regulated to around one PSI right now. And what we're gonna do is we're going to use this lever right here to meter in some gas to start this up. Now, look at that, just flames from nowhere. And the way that this is set up, it's just going to continue to percolate propane through this sand and you'll have this beautiful, very warm on this summer day fire for your own enjoyment. And so that was the first step, but then it, it crossed my mind. What if we could take this fire feature and use it to create an interesting chemistry experiment that I've also seen. And we could turn this fire feature into a giant sugar snake generator. So what we're gonna need for the sugar snake then is both sugar and baking soda. And so we put all this together to demonstrate how we can take something that was once just a fluidized sand bed, repurpose it as a fire feature, which then could have the potential to do some interesting chemistry. And now we learned a lot through this whole process, like the limitations of what sugar snakes can do. Most of what I've seen on the internet is maybe one to three inches in diameter. If you try to go much bigger, you start to have much slower growth because there's this issue between the cross-sectional area of material you're trying to push up and the circumference in which you're building that material. As the radius gets larger, the cross-sectional area increases as a function of the radius squared, whereas our circumference is a linear change. So as it gets larger and larger, it grows slower and slower, but that certainly didn't stop us. I call this one the ram's horns, because my wife went to CSU.
So do you like asking big questions or taking cross-disciplinary or lateral approaches like converting an oven roasting pan into a fluidized sand bed or a giant sugar snake generator? Then I would ask that you subscribe to Ryan Make. Hit the bell for notifications if this channel is growing on you. And if you have some feedback, I'd love to hear it in the comments, either on this video or on project ideas you would like to see here on Ryan Make. And always a thumbs up or a like is greatly appreciated. So thanks for watching here on Ryan Make, where we figure it out. Sugar snakes aren't all gumdrops and lollipops, though. There's a lot of cleanup. Many gardens have snakes, so having a good garden trowel to root them out is really important.